Hi, and thank you for your kind comments about the last video. Now, we're going to answer the question, what happened? I was working at WNEX, which covered Macon and, and some points beyond, but then I went to work for FM 99, which was WMAZ FM, which was a 100,000 watt radio station that covered 27 counties in the state of Georgia. 99 Ways, you're a music station, bad company. I like playing music like that because I seldom get to use that voice. So I can say, bad company. You can order at a Hardee's drive through window that way, but it, you know, it, it really scares the crud out of the people inside. Hello, I like a hamburger. Now, there are three types of radio stations, as ruled by the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. One is a local station, and it covers basically your city. Then there's something called a regional radio station. It's designed and commissioned by the government to be able to cover either an entire state or a portion of an entire state. Then you have a clear channel radio station, which means that there's usually one 50,000 watt AM stick on that channel. I've got the perfect solution for your old socks. Oh, good. What what might I do with my old socks? You need to use them to cover up all those people that are running around there butt naked. How big you think my feet are, lady? Hold on. Oh, hold on. I think we know what this is. Hello, 99 Ways. I'm butt naked. Bye -bye. Now, the way it was set up, you had a manager, and you had the TV division, and you had the radio division. This, this one guy was the general manager over both of them. Eventually, this manager retired, and it was bought by a company called Multimedia, and they decided a new structure was in order. So they hired one manager for television and one manager to handle both of the radio stations. Multimedia was a big company. They had newspapers, and they had magazines, and they had television, syndicated television, local television stations, radio stations, Jerry Springer, and a guy named Phil Donahue. Phil did pretty good until Oprah came to Chicago. But guess who was on the next page that year in the brochure? Loving it in La Vita. Loving it up when I'm going down. 645, quarter to 7, 15 till the hour. Good morning, Bill Elder taking the eighth caller. Caller number eight to our contest line, 646-0000. Adds a line straight in here to me. All you have to do is gobble like a turkey to the William Tell Overture. And I have a gift certificate good for a butterball turkey from Kroger. A 10 to 12 pound butterball turkey just right for your Thanksgiving. From your friends at 99 Ways, caller number eight gets it. I've been phoning. And here's the second part of why this piece of the puzzle starts to fall apart. Because they not only owned us, but they owned a lot of television and radio stations all over the country. So what happened was, we were making a lot of money, but other stations weren't. So instead of us getting to keep the profit that we made, it got distributed to the bad radio stations that weren't doing anything. And eventually, the guys that came over from another state, the general manager in particular, got kind of tired of it. The general manager's name was Fred Newton, and, and I owe he and Oscar a lot, because they're the reasons that I got this great job in radio. But they went back across town to Fred's old radio station and proceeded to kick everybody's butt. I had at that point something they call a six-month no-compete contract, which meant I could go to work for another radio station, but I would have to be off the air anywhere within the radius of our radio station for six months. Who's this? This is Donna Hale. All right, Donna. I guess you know what happens now. My son's going to do this for me. Oh, that's that right. <laughs> He's a great. He said if I dialed, he'd gobble. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. So, so, Donna, what's your son's name? Benjamin Hale. Oh, so let's put the uh, Benny boy on the phone here and let's hear one. Okay, here he is. Okay. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. That's it. And we had general managers and program directors come and go, and we floundered, and we even changed formats to oldies. And of course, that crap never works when you're a heritage hits radio station. It never has, and it never will work. But eventually, this group bought us and moved all these radio stations in the market over to this one building. And that's when the real downfall started. And uh, nice sunshine here at 99 Ways. Morning. Yes, Mark. She called me Mark. Mark in the Dark was the guy that worked nights. What I want to know is, like, when you said the fifth caller, right. do you have to dial the number five times? So what happened? Well, it's called the Telecommunications Act of 1996. Yes, my congressman voted for it. 
It was supposed to make the level playing field for anybody that wanted to own a radio station, including minority groups. But it didn't really turn out that way because big companies started buying these stations in groups. It used to be that you could only own a television station, an AM and an FM station in one market. That was it. And, and you had a certain amount of coverage area before, before you could own another station. But when the Telecommunications Act of 1996 came around, that all went out the door. Adjacent to our huge multimedia broadcasting building, the Bill Elder Highway, its traffic backs up along with our breakfast every morning. Hi, this is George. Bill Elder at 99 Ways, so what do you think about the wall, sir? Uh -huh. You know, I've never been a big fan of Pink Floyd. Sir, Pink I'm, Floyd. I'm more of a Led Zeppelin <laughs> Berlin, fan myself. Berlin Wall. The grandkids wall. love it. All we right, all sit man. around and listen to right. the, a little house of the holy. That's fine. You had these huge conglomerates going around city to city, buying as many stations as they possibly could. And when it all came to a head, when the situation rested, I was working in a building with with six. There were seven radio stations in one building. I was in there with six other morning shows going on at the same time. And when radio started to change is when all of these people that bought these huge numbers of radio stations found out that they could computerize everything, hire one guy to sit in front of seven or eight computer screens and be sure that all the radio stations were working. And when they figured out they could do this and not pay money for disc jockeys, or not many disc jockeys, they, they started hearing angels sing. But the other thing too is competition went away. You know, here we were, we were working in the same building with, the, with three or four stations we used to compete against. And all of a sudden you're going, why bother? 99 Ways and Steve Whitwood, bring me a higher love. That would be anybody over 6'2". And uh, coming back, we have... <laughs> Give us a break, Bill. Let it rest, will you? Fleetwood Mac Warrant, Elton John is on the way. News update now with Laura.